Hello and welcome to this CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto, California, the CUBE studios. I'm John Furrier, your host of the CUBE. We have CUBE alumni, Mitzina Isia, CEO of DigiCert. Great to see you, I mean, great. Thanks for coming in the CUBE. Appreciate you coming back in. Thank you, John. Always a pleasure to be back on the CUBE. So I'm psyched. We're going to do um, a bunch of segments on shift happens about readiness, the quantum readiness is coming. We got some great interviews, but I wanted to get your reaction to our SuperCloud 7 event. We wish you could have had you there. Um, next time for sure, we'll definitely have you on. I mean, you know, what you guys are doing around digital trust is at the heart of what we're seeing in this major inflection point around data. SuperCloud 7 was about the next modern platform for data, not the modern stack as everyone called it, but as people prepare for the Gen AI future, the data is behaving differently, but it's still the same game. You got to store it, move it, process it, um, and Gen AI brings unique capabilities. So, you know, data is now exposed even more, another surface area for security, digital trust. I mean, we hear about hallucinations and drift. <laughs> I mean, these are, air, these are legit concerns because as these models start to you know, take more of a power law, you have the big models and then you have specialty models, a lot of model interactions. So there's going to be a lot of emphasis on the quality of the data, but from a security standpoint, privacy, governance, never mind just physical locations, just from a digital perspective, yeah. there's huge open challenges. This is something that you're paying attention to. What's your reaction? What was your reaction to SuperCloud 7 and what, what, how do you see this evolving? Oh, thank you, John. And first, yeah, great job on the SuperCloud 7 event. You know, we've been saying for a while, data is the new gold and you know, Gen AI, everyone is excited about the productivity enhancements that it's going to bring. Uh, but you know, it's a double-edged sword. And uh, you know, you're going to see some interesting challenges for data protection, for data governance, privacy. You know, as CEO of Digicel, let me give you a simple example. Uh, you know, traditionally in an enterprise, you might have three systems. You might have a finance system like NetSuite. You might have a CRM system like Salesforce. And you might have a product system like Jira, right? And traditionally, different people had access to these systems. Now, with Gen AI and this new data layer emerging, all of these are showing up in a data lake. And uh, these AI bots are running with privileged access. And anyone can ask a question like, hey, this bug in Jira, how many customers does it impact and what's the potential churn and ARR reduction as a result? Now, you know, suddenly, you, know, you have a new uh, class of problems to deal with, right? Who's asking uh, these questions? Do they have access yeah. to the information? And the simple role-based access control models start breaking down because you have to understand uh, who's asking the question, what's the intent behind the question, are they allowed to get those insights, what kind of uh, what kind of data leakage is happening through these insights. So new challenges for data protection, data governance, and maybe even privacy, right? Cyber resilience has been a hot topic, obviously. You know, people in the, the data protection, backup and recovery, classic storage kind of segment, enter in ransomware. Okay, so now they kind of rename it cyber resilience. <laughs> well, you mentioned bots, okay? Chat bots, gen one, automated bots. This is the path to agents, right. agentic systems. You're seeing, um, you know, role-based access, as you mentioned, is kind of an old-school classic problem in computer right. science and database design. Okay, you have a database who has privileges. Right. Great, bots need access to the data horizontally yeah. and domain-specific, yep. as well as it's generative, which means you never know when yeah. it's going to be gone. So, scope the problem and scope the complexity for us, because this is a whole nother dimension of thinking and science behind it. What's your, what, scope yeah. it for us. I, look, uh, I mean, you mentioned two prop parts. One is the resilience, I'll get to that from an encryption perspective. The other uh, is more around, you know, zero trust uh, AI, right? Like how do I have these generative AI bots run with privilege, but I understand who's asking questions, right? What's the intent behind the questions? And what is the, the information that has been gleaned out of these desperate sources, is that resulting in a data leakage uh, scenario, right? Or a data exfiltration or a privacy violation. So it is a hard problem because it's not as simple as, yeah. you know, here's a system and here are the, you know, here's a directory of people who have access to it, right? Because the data is all getting mishmashed and cross-referenced. So that's a, that's a new class of problems. How do I, you know, marry search, generative AI with, you know, governance, privacy controls. On the resilience side, I mean, it's interesting to see many new companies, you know, yeah. take traditional backups and, you know, modernize themselves into a, 
uh, a, a cyber resilience company. I'd say a few things. First, you know, phishing still continues to be a very uh, prominent source of you know, step one into the organization. And with generative AI, we see uh, a lot of more sophisticated attacks. Like I can you know, craft an email with an image yeah. uh, or a video or, or even a, a voice. fake voice yes. that looks so legit that you would be forced to take some action. And that's usually kind of step one uh, of getting into an organization. So that's a, that's a big concern. So you need to fight yeah. uh, these new ways to attack an organization with AI powered ways to defend it. Um, and on, the, on the, the backup and resilience side, you know, and this is a good segue into the quantum topic that you had mentioned, yeah. I'd say, look, the, the, the fundamental authentication and encryption mechanisms that we use today are based on traditional problems like factoring, which are under severe threat from quantum computers, right? And in fact, DigiCert's uh, doing the world's first quantum readiness day on September 26th, uh, where we will talk about these new NIST algorithms that have been released as standards for encryption and authentication. So I think people need to start thinking about how do I encrypt my data, right? So uh, it is protected from quantum computers that can break you know, current encryption and authentication methods. Um, and that's a, that's a huge yeah. Y2K-like problem, right? Probably Y2K times 10 yeah. without a deadline, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it does represent, in my opinion, uh, an extinction level event for current cryptography uh, unless organizations start adopting these new standards that have been published. I mean, it is, it is a potential extinction event if it's not solved. And you brought up the SuperCloud 7, which will go back and then the encryption piece to it because I think the dots connect because the one thing that came out of SuperCloud 7 was, obviously the market and product platforms are in, are in, in shift mode. Yep. So they're shifting. You got open table formats, governance is changing for the reason you mentioned, and two, the intelligent applications are going to be very bot-like. So yep. your reference to bots or agents will have to act on people. So it's not going to be one directory that solves them all. Exactly. Agents will have to need a proxy. Yep. They then need privileges. Underneath all that is the encryption piece. And this is why I think it's fundamentally a multi-dimensional problem. And that's why I want to get your reaction for this readiness day, quantum readiness day, because if that's not solved, classic encryption will be hacked by quantum. Yep. So this is the big thrust for the readiness day, September 26th, it's coming up. Why should people pay attention to it? What is the posture that the industry is taking? Take us through that. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, the two fundamental building blocks Encryption and authentication, that is the glue for our digital trust, is based on these math problems like factorizing big numbers, which Shor's algorithm has cracked. And now, over the last several decades, advances in quantum computers have got us to a point where there is a threat of a sufficiently stable quantum computer being available that can crack these traditional uh, uh, math problems like factorization. To address that, NIST, yeah. just a few weeks ago, re finally released, after a decade uh, of work, three algorithms, one for encryption and two for signing and authentication, that are based on new math problems. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's this complex lattice math, yeah. right? Think about a space with millions of dots and you need to find the two closest ones, right? So mathematicians yeah. sit and think about that. Uh, these problems are not crackable, at least today, even with modern quantum computers, if they are available. So, the, if, you, if you listen to NIST guidelines, and you know, we're talking about this quite a bit, um, it is time to upgrade your encryption and authentication to post-quantum cryptography. And those standards are available today. Um, a lot of this we call crypto agility, right? Uh, you know, you need to have systems in place that can inventory all your cryptographic assets. Uh, and then you need automation to be able yeah. to rapidly change it. Because as you know, yeah. the initial versions of these standards may have bugs. You know, you might have to swap in one version with another. There's no guarantees in this business. So as an organization, making sure that you're prepared, making sure you're taking yeah. steps uh, for crypto agility is very, very important. Explain what post-quantum um, cri cryptography is in your words. How would how would someone grok that concept? How would you describe it? So post-quantum cryptography is using these new math problems, lattice-based math, for encryption and authentication, and they are available as standards. So what's going to happen is 
when you do your database backups or iPhone backups, right? Or when, uh, when you go to a website and the website needs to authenticate and say, I'm really Bank of America. All of those are, will, will be based on these new math problems that quantum computers today cannot crack. The old methods have, you know, algorithms exist that, that show that these can be cracked if we had sufficiently stable quantum computers. Amit, I want to say thank you for being a great participant in the Cube because this is the kind of data we want to get out there. People are learning. It's a whole nother systems revolution coming. I haven't seen this kind of action, even from younger computer science and mathematicians. Everything's math now. All vector embeds, neural networks is math based. Yeah. Quantum, heavy math. Yeah. Uh, just not enough content out there. So thanks for coming in and sharing and reacting to SuperCloud 7. Obviously we, we are pushing a lot of content out there for the audience. Thanks for uh, listening and contributing. If you love the content, tag it and share it on social media. And of course, you guys got a lot more content coming out. So appreciate you coming on. Thank you, John. Okay, I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE in Palo Alto, getting all the data. It's all about the systems and about the math. And we got the, the post-quantum cryptography wave coming. The shift is happening. And you're starting to see the perfect storm of innovation. Data table formats, governance, intelligent applications, agentic systems, digital twins. This is stuff that we've got in Silicon Angle. Check it out. Um, this is the beginning of a whole nother multi-generational computer industry wave. It's hitting, it's relevant, and it's going to impact all of our lives. So stay tuned for more with theCUBE here. Thanks for watching.